Hello, everyone. Dave Kusak here. Hope you're all enjoying this beautiful day. Thank you so much for coming. I'm very, very happy to have Kevin Bruner here, who is a VP of Marketing at CD Baby and guitarist for a band called Small Town Poets. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Dave? I'm, I'm really great. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to share some stuff with us. Really okay. appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So we've got people here from all over the world, it looks like. Brazil, Canada, Europe. Awesome. Thank you all for coming. So let's start out. Uh, CD Baby, as, as most of you are aware, it is, uh, has become the largest distributor of independent music in the world, and a lot more. And that's what this uh, webinar really is, is about, to uh, show you all the things that you can do with CD Baby. But before we get to that, um, I want to start with Kevin, because he's got a great story, kind of how he got <laughs> To where he is. Kevin, you went to Belmont University in Nashville, great school, and while you were there you joined a band called Small Town Poets. I'm getting all this from uh, the last time you and I spoke. And yeah. You guys were signed to a, to a major label, or a division of EMI, and uh, you, know, you told me your first record sold a couple hundred thousand units, which is pretty awesome. The second record sold a hundred thousand units, and you guys were nominated for a Grammy. Mm -hmm. and that's that's awesome, really, coming out of college. Yeah. Uh, and you guys were playing sold out shows, and you know you were finding the the reality of a of a label deal in that time period to be maybe a little bit less than you expected. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So I mean, that era was you know the the mid to late '90s, and at that time, uh, you know, it's funny to think about now, but at that time. If you didn't have a record deal, you pretty much couldn't make a professional quality sounding album. So you pretty much need the, needed the, a record deal in order to finance uh, a project. Otherwise, you would just be, you know, left with trying to, you know, scrap together a demo of, of you know, your band that, that just, just wasn't commercially viable at that time. So you had to have a, a record deal. And so... You know, there was a lot of great experiences that we had as far as, you know, uh, you know, some of the things you said, having some strong sales, playing some great shows. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're kind of left sort of uh, your career is hanging in the balance depending on what a couple guys in an office, who they decide they want to support or back that's on their label. Hey, this we, we believe in this album more than that one, so we want to put more marketing dollars in this or... We need to market that album as a favor to somebody else, and it's going to take marketing dollars away from that album. And so you kind of just feel like you're in this uh, this weird place of your career is is uh, being uh, decided by people that don't care about your music as much as you do. <laughs> and uh, and that you know that was kind of you you mentioned our first album selling two hundred thousand, and the second one did about half as much, and and that was partly because you know there was some folks who like, ah, I'm not interested in promoting this to radio as much as we did the first one, or, or just kind of some weird twists and turns that didn't make sense to, that it wasn't that the album wasn't good, or the fans weren't, fan base wasn't growing, it was just, you know, some weird decisions. So, <coughs> excuse me, kind of walked away from that situation just feeling like, man, everything's out of my control. There's nothing that, that we're doing here. We're the ones creating all the art. We're the ones that feel the most passionate about it. But yet, at the end of the day, we, we're the last to, to get paid. <laughs> and we're the last to, you know, we're making a lot of concessions for folks um, so they, you know, can feel good about supporting the record. But in the end, they still, you know, might go half-hearted on it. And you just walk away going, there has to be a better way. Um, and at that time... Uh, you know, I kind of, uh, we had kind of made my way into other things. I was doing photography and, and into starting another band on my own and figured there has to be a better way to do this. And that's when I came across CD Baby. And 
originally it was, uh, you know, I was just looking online. This was like in 2003. How do you sell music online or how do you do this or that and, and came across CD Baby and um, started using CD Baby to, to distribute an independent album and uh, then eventually got a job here and, and uh, it's just been, you know, it's been kind of a passion of mine to, to help artists understand the opportunities that are out there for them to just kind of, you know, engage with the community of, you know, uh, there's just a lot of great things that can be learned by hanging out and chatting with other artists artists about how they're seeing success, what's working for them, what's not. And uh, and to kind of bring the, the small town poets story full circle, um, about four years ago we, uh, the original members kind of got back together and started making music again. And uh, we just released a, a, a new album this, this Christmas, a, a Christmas album called Christmas Time Again uh, that just came out uh, right before Thanksgiving. So I'm still out there in the trenches, just got back from a short tour and I'm still I call it uh, uh, market research now. So whenever I go on tour, I tell CDB, I'm just doing market research. <laughs> so, well, it's true. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm still out there trying to make it happen just like everybody else. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, Derek Sivers, who founded CD Baby, is a good, good friend of mine and, uh, you know, is very prescient, I think, of him to kind of start CD Baby the way he did, and uh, you know it was early. So 2003, when when you discovered them, how long was the company going by then? It had been around for five years. I think it had been sort of rolling, uh, picking up steam for about two or three years. So I mean, it originally started, you know, in in Derek's garage and. Uh, and then in 2001, it moved out to Portland. It started in Woodstock, New York, and moved out to Portland. And that's when it was kind of like, hey, this is really taking off. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I, I came up, I discovered it when it was still sort of um, this new thing. We weren't selling downloads yet. And, you know, I think it was that year that I signed up my album that CD Baby was like the first to get independent artists on iTunes and start working with digital uh, retailers in order to distribute independent music to them. So it was a very exciting time and it just seemed like a whole world of opportunity uh, was opening up because if you think about it, uh, until around that time there wasn't, you know, like back when you thinking about the label days, the label folks really stood between us and the fans. Uh, we couldn't get music into stores, we couldn't, it, it's, you know, you could play local clubs but it was hard to get on a tour if you don't have a label and, and uh, the internet was still this brand new thing, and so it's, it's it's an interesting place now where it's you have direct contact with fans, where back then we really did. If they came to the show, we did, and and we would try to keep that relationship going. But uh, there's so many tools now that that take that burden and that that kind of wall uh, between the artists and fans away. Well, it's it's a uh, it's an interesting time and. You know, back then, 2003, 2004, we were, you know, just really beginning to see the effects of the disruption of uh, the Internet and Napster and Kazaa and many other services that have since, you know, come and gone, but CD Baby is still there. You know, starting with this foundation of helping independent artists and supporting the format of the day, and you guys were able to make a you know, a graceful transition into digital distribution. But, you know, now, uh, you know, why we're doing this webinar really is to talk to people about some of the services that CD Baby offers that, you know, a lot of people just don't know about. I mean, if, if you think of CD Baby as a CD distributor and you've got your music up there and you know, you've got your store and you're all ready to go and maybe you're selling tracks digitally, um, that's sort of the core business, but now you guys are starting to expand into a lot of different things. Um, want to talk a little bit about some of that, maybe from a high level, and then we can yeah. dive in. Yeah, so I mean, like, like you were saying, the, the, the revenue streams used to be pretty simple, and, uh, and a lot of artists still tend to, to, to view the industry that way. I've got my CD, I sell my, my CD at my show, I get 15 bucks for that CD, and and that's the main way I'm making money. But 
But as the world has gotten more digital, the, the cool thing is, is that um, a lot of revenue streams that independent artists have been generating and just didn't know about it, know their music was generating different revenue streams, are now becoming accessible. And, and that's a lot of what we're working at and on here at CD Baby is we're, as the, we've transitioned from an industry that was based on just selling CDs to then adding digital distribution to now we've got uh, sync placements happening all over the place. We've got YouTube, we've got publishing revenue that's easier to track down now and, and um, all sorts of new media that's creating new types of usages that generate royalties and income. It's, it's become a very complex uh, uh, revenue system compared to the old days where I sold a CD, I got paid. And so what we're trying to do is really untangle this mess for independent artists and make sure they get paid because in some of these instances, if the artist doesn't collect or the money isn't paid out within you know, a couple years uh, window, it just gets thrown into a big pile of cash that ends up going to major label artists. So we've been doing a lot of work with that both with like YouTube monetization, our sync licensing program, and uh, our CD Baby Pro offer, which is adding publishing administration to help collect a lot of these royalties that are out there for artists that on your own you really can't collect, and uh, but it's not okay for us to see independent artists lose out on money that's owed to them. So yeah, I love that. Okay, so that's that's quite a suite of tools and services that, that you've just thumbnailed. Let's uh, let's take them one at a time. Let's start with uh, music distribution. Kind of update us basically on what you guys are doing for uh, various ways of distributing, directly distributing recorded music and helping artists uh, create storefronts and, and get their product out in that way. Yeah, so we have, you know, our standard, you know, kind of distribution core distribution product we have where um, getting your music on iTunes, Spotify, and all those all those places. And and yeah, we still get questions with from artists about should I have my music everywhere? And there's a lot of debate about Spotify lately and and uh, you know the way I look at distribution and, and and from that perspective is just as an independent artist, you know, I'm gonna direct my fans where to get my music it's going to benefit me the most, but I want somebody who may have heard a song of ours on the radio, just happens to be a Spotify user, doesn't have a relationship with us. I want them to be able to find my music as well. Now, if I get to a giant, you know, mainstream success level where I can start controlling, you know, there's massive demand and I can control the funnel, that's that may be a different story. But so we still encourage folks, you know, get your music out there. Take advantage of all the storefronts. People enjoy music different ways. I'm somebody who uses, uh, I have an iPhone, so I use iTunes, and I buy music on iTunes. I'm not really a Spotify user, but so if your music's not where I tend to engage with music, it's kind of a missed opportunity. But so, you know, we have that. And then on, you know, with our own website, um, cdbaby.com, it's really you know, a direct-to-fan storefront. Most of the activity happens there because artists are sending their fans there to buy it. And that's where, you know, for us, it's an opportunity to offer the best payout on the web. You make 91% um, of, of the, for a download, you make 91% of the money. And it's, it makes a huge difference when, you know, you sell 10 album downloads through CD Baby or through iTunes. Um, so we provide tools like a, a music player, and, and give you merchandising opportunities in order to, to kind of cater it to the way, you know, sell your music the way you want and, and make the most money from it. So um, so that's kind of like, you know, the, we're kind of have our feet on both sides of it, the direct-to-fan, uh, you know, with our .com site, cdbaby.com, and then just the, the, the general global distribution where it's important to get your music out to the world because you never know who's going to be looking for it and where. Sure. Um, so a couple questions. Uh, one from the one from the chat. The C from Paul Temple. Does CD Baby put music onto Amazon too? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Amazon, Spotify, Deezer, Beats, you name it. If if it's a, a major player around the world as far as 
uh, music consumption, we're getting the music there. So yeah, Amazon, uh, not only do we get digital music there, but if you're selling CDs, we represent your music really well on Amazon. And uh, if you're moving some units, uh, Amazon will actually warehouse some of them. And, and the way our catalog shows up on Amazon is as if Amazon is selling it. So the chances of um, uh, selling on Amazon is increased as opposed to being like, you know, some of those other listings that Amazon puts like right. Marketplace or whatever. So we actually, uh, part of the reason our CD sales have been up year over year, over year for the last couple of years has be been because of uh, some of the work we've done with Amazon and we're selling a lot of units there. So it's been really exciting to see that, you know, even as you know, a lot of the conversation may center around digital opportunities and, and new revenues coming on because of digital streams. For us, it's still important to, you know, not just neglect the CD. Sure, it's, it's, it's a format that's in decline, but for independent artists, there's still opportunity to get better placement, better positioning on some of these key stores like Amazon, and it's, it's turning into thousands and thousands of dollars for artists. So. Okay, so proof on a couple points that uh, you can still sell CDs Absolutely. and the album is not dead. <laughs> no, actually, it's funny. When people tell me the album's dead, I laugh. One, I always assume that they're not an artist. Um, but uh, two, I, I think that um, there, there was a, I don't have it in front of me. It was like a month ago. There was um, a, a website like Digital Music News or Hypebot posted this um, chart about how people uh, discover a song or, or ha and where they went to yeah it was something about how they discover a song and you know YouTube was like the number one spot but shortly not far behind YouTube was from other music by that artist and so to me if you know somebody like and it even just happened just last year U2 I'm a big fan of the band U2 they released a single I really didn't care but I'm a huge fan of the band. It was like, okay, uh, but when they release an album, I'm all in because it's like an experience. Where a single, it just feels like a one-off. To me, as an artist, I think it's important to go in and not just just randomly release a bunch of individual songs. You can do that, and there's certainly artists having success doing that. But to me, it's a matter of I'm creating an experience. Not only am I creating an experience for my fans, so there's there's some uh, connection from song to song or even some context. They may only buy one song, but they're getting it in context of a bigger movement of what you did. But for me as an artist, I think it's important because when, like, our, our album we just did, I'm very proud of it, and it's some of the best work we've ever done. That wouldn't have happened if we just did, hey, let's just record a single. It, we were in there in the studio really working hard to make this whole experience something special. So that's where I fall on the whole album versus single. <clears throat> I could be wrong. No, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. You know, the, uh, one of the things that I've learned over the years is that, you know, bandwidth increases constantly, computer power increases constantly, the screen resolution gets better, the storage gets better, everything gets better. So, you know, what today appears to be a singles market in, in many respects uh, and somewhat limited or created by the MP3 and, and the way that format was created, it'll be nothing to be downloading, you know, complete albums or, you know, something even beyond the album in terms of 50 songs in a row. Yeah. You know, just a flash. Yeah. Yeah. In the not too distant future, and you know the whole thing that Neil Young is working on, and others to try and improve the sound quality. Yeah, uh, that's all going to pay benefits to everybody, and the formats are going to are shift uh, as they have been shifting all along. Yeah, I definitely see as is bandwidth is becoming cheaper and storage is becoming cheaper that there'll be a move to higher quality formats that. And, and maybe ways to experience music that we haven't thought of yet or somebody's thinking about, but uh, smarter minds than me is about, you know, new ways that people might experience it with devices that enhance the overall experience that fans want to engage more in a different way. 
Um, we're getting a few questions here before we move on on sort of the economics of how you guys pay out on CD sales and how you pay out on uh, on tracks and downloads. Can you just cover that real quickly and then we'll move on? Yeah, yeah, I, I saw one of those in there as well. Um, basically, when we do distribution, you know, to like iTunes, all those folks, those companies take a cut, but then um, we take 9% of what comes in. Uh, through, through our website, cdbaby.com, you make uh, 91%. So we, we still take 9%, but it's 9%. Uh, no, other, no other company's taking a little cut off of it. So to compare iTunes to what you would make selling uh, a single directly on cdbaby.com compared to iTunes, for a 99 cent single, you would make you know, 90 cents. Um, on our site, for a 99 cent single on iTunes, you would make 64 cents. So, you definitely, it's to your advantage to uh, direct your fans. The fans that are diehard fans are going to buy your music wherever you tell them to go buy it to, to CD Baby. Um, comparing that to like other sites, Bandcamp takes 15 percent, so it's a little bit more. Um, and uh, you know, there's all sorts of different distribution models out there. I think our model is the best for independent artists, and uh, I don't just say that because I've worked here. Uh, I've I've seen it play out in a lot of different ways, and and I like the way we work, and so that's why I have all my independent music here. <laughs> um, as far as like, I saw a question about CD Baby Pro. Uh, for that on publishing administration, we take fifteen percent. So it's a little bit of a different thing, which is very very favorable to the, the songwriter. If you go looking at what publishing deals you know, out in the wild, like with a, if you signed with a publishing company, they would be taking more than that. So, Okay, so kind of summarize this part. It seems to me like you, know, you provide one-stop shopping for uh, people who want to distribute music digitally and in physical CD format. You can load it up. You can sell it yourself. You can sell it on your store. You can sell it on Virtually every platform that matters, yeah. uh, with you know basically one effort, you're able to get your music out everywhere. Is that correct? Correct, correct. Yeah, okay. we and that's that's we want it to be. You, you said we want it to be a one-stop shop that artists can put their catalog here and they can tap into all the revenue streams that are out there that that are generating money for independent artists. All right, very cool. All right, everybody you got that. We're going to move on. Let's talk about some of these new services that you're offering. Uh, YouTube has become the number one source where people discover new music, bar none, bigger than radio, bigger than anything, YouTube. And there are multiple strategies for monetizing YouTube. Some are emerging uh, as we speak. Google is about to... Uh, come into this market via YouTube pretty strong. Uh, so how do you guys regard YouTube as a platform and what are the services that you offer and people can take advantage of? Well, we help artists monetize on YouTube through the YouTube content ID system. So basically uh, what happens is, you know, artists, we when they sign up, opt in for the program with us, uh, we YouTube scans their entire catalog looking for that artist's tracks to see where it's used in video. And then uh, they will turn on ads on those videos. And the interesting thing is a lot of artists will think, well, you know, my, you know, I haven't played much outside of my local market. I only have a couple albums. Nobody's using my music on YouTube. It is surprising, in fact, somewhat shocking how much music is being used and by artists that who never thought anyone would be using their music you know and it's not people using it for nefarious purposes I know some artists tend to have a negative reaction like why are these people using my music a lot of it is like people who are just you know they have a holiday video or a, a funny video of their cat or just a vacation video and somehow they came across your song and they're like this song's perfect for my video and they throw it in there they don't know anything about copyright law. They're not trying to rip you off. and um, But their video may get a lot of views and may get passed around. And instead of 
you know, taking that person's video down, it YouTube is turning on ads and the artist benefits from that usage. Um, so yeah. It